Hi everyone, I am Phoenix and today I'm going to be talking about things to do when you are blue. So, everybody gets down in life, you know, not every single day is full of sunshine and rainbows, you know, as well as there are ups, there are also downs, and so it's good to be prepared so that you can deal with whatever life throws at you. So, when you're down, what do you usually do? You know, you might sit down and watch TV, watch a show, or you might just lay down and then eat and just binge. You might drink alcohol, you might take drugs, you know, or alternatively, you might want to get outside and, and dance, dance it out. But generally, most people when they're down won't have the energy nor the motivation to really do much, uh, I find, and the tendency is just to to fold in on oneself until the whole thing passes through and maybe sleep you know what I'm saying or just like I said just mung out to whatever's on TV and not really focus too much you know, just be distracted some people when they're blue they'll see company and they find distraction that way uh, personally I think instead of distracting oneself when you're blue when something's getting you down I, I prefer myself just to deal with it you know, find the source of the pain or the depression or whatever is making me feel blue. And if I can't change that, at least change my perspective and, and how I look at it so that the way that it affects me changes. You know, if you can't change the thing in front of you, you can change how it affects you. If you can't change the outside, you can change the inside. You know, everyone's always got a choice. Um, failing that, you know, some things, it doesn't matter how much you try to, you know, it's like that, that proverb goes, you know, accept the things you can't change, change the things you can't accept. As much as you try to do that sometimes, it's pointless, it just doesn't work. Some things are too insurmountable, too large and heavy to really lift off and to get off your back or get off your chest. And so it does take time and maybe a bit of hibernation is in order. You know, and in these times, you might be inclined to just sink in on yourself and have a few drinks and just be distracted. And that's fine. I think what's important is to not get stuck in these phases and these cycles and develop bad habits, you know, when we're feeling blue and then carry those colors of blue throughout throughout our life and carry those bad habits. You know, because depression, that's what the what bad thing about depression is, the worst thing is it, it can build up just like a snowball. The worse that you feel, the worse that your mindset and your perspective and your attitude and the way that you regard everything and you know, how it affects you. And then when it affects you worse because you're not looking at it the best way, you're always looking for the, the worst interpretations or the more negative, then it impacts you more and it makes you more negative. And then you can see the cycle. It just compounds upon itself. So sometimes it might be good just to distract upon yourself until it goes through otherwise like I said you know it's good to resolve it and maybe you distract yourself for a little bit get some distance create some space just for yourself to to get a little bit lighter so you've got more, your head more together you've got the strength and the focus to then return to the problem at hand and deal with it you know and whether it be a relationship that and maybe there's an issue in a relationship and maybe you need to confront the other person about something you know, people hate confrontation. A lot of people do anything to avoid confrontation. Meanwhile, I was talking behind that person's back and making things worse. Making it harder to confront the person because the situation becomes more complex and more trickier, you know, more heavier. So I think the, the best thing to do if that's the issue is, like I said, just confront and communicate. And confrontation doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. Confrontation has that connotation. Really what it means is if there is a misalignment of interpretations uh, or there's like an, an error in, in people sharing a mutual view and they can't understand each other or see eye to eye, then it's just focusing on where the error is, where the problem is in communication or interpretation and communicating it and, and, and balancing back and forth between each other, trying to understand each other's perspective and intentions so that you can see, okay, this is how it is instead of it being that way, which, you know, and if it ends up being that way, the way that, you know, made you upset in the first place, and you talk with the other person, it's like, yep, that's how it is, 
then so be it. At least you've clarified it. Uh, maybe you'll agree to disagree. There's a lot of wisdom in that. And if it's something that you can't move past or accept and move on from, just let it go then. You know, maybe it's best to depart for that time and maybe come back to the relationship later. You know, we'll just give it space. If it's something to do with work, maybe you're overworking and, you know, you're just exhausted or you're stressed out. Maybe you work with people you hate. You're sick of being pushed around. You're sick of the politics and posturing and one-upping and people manipulating and talking behind your back. And it's just doing your head in, you know. And then maybe you come home and you don't really get all the support there either. So you go to work, you try your best to do your job, and you don't get you get more criticism than, they, than you get praise. And then you go home, and then maybe you get more criticism. Whatever the reason, whether it's your home life, your work life, and these different spaces that you are existing in for large periods of your time, consistently. I think, once again, it comes to confrontation and communication and communicating with everyone your interests and what's upsetting you and asking them if there's anything that you can better about how you're expressing yourself. Asking them if they're okay with everything just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, otherwise, at the end of the day, sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and suck it up and push through. And I know it can be depressing. But really, like, when I go to work, I try to leave my baggage at the door, and I don't really let the stuff affect me. I kind of, I don't put up a shield, but if there's some negative crap that I can't be fucked over worrying about or letting stress me out, then I'm not going to take it on board. I'll just let it wash over me and wash away. You know what I'm saying? And then when I get home, you know, after work, I'll start doing the things I enjoy doing. And this is where hobbies come in. Hobbies are very important. So I think in terms of what to do when you are blue... Communication is definitely part of it, whether it be communicating with other people that are part of the problem that's depressing you, or whether it be about inner communication and exploring the idea and the, the concept and the reality that's upsetting you and trying to change your perspective on it so that it affects you differently. Communication doesn't help. Hobbies, things you are passionate about, things that make you happy to do because it comes from the heart, so the more you get creative, you feed back to the heart because that's what creation does if you create from the heart afterwards you know nothing makes you feel nearly as proud as when you finish finish your tree and you've seen it fully growing and you taste that first fruit you know or you finish your painting and you're showing your friends and they're like wow this is amazing all from nothing or when you cook, cook a lovely meal whether it's just for yourself or your family or whoever and you put time and love and care into it you know whatever your art form writing poetry or dancing skateboarding you know even playing games you might consider an art form if you're playing against other people it's definitely an art to it but whatever makes you happy doesn't matter if it's not productive doesn't matter if it doesn't fit in with your ideal regime or what others expect of you if as long as it makes you feel good and you connect and it connects with your heart do it Especially when you're feeling blue. And I think a lot of the time when I am feeling depressed or even frustrated at life and angry at life, that's when I feel the most motivation to take all that dark energy, so to speak, and turn it into something creative. Make light of it. And really, that's how it works with me. I can channel dark energy and it motivates me like nothing else. Like, to do stuff, you know, that I normally wouldn't have the motivation to do or the energy such as writing poetry. I love writing when I'm angry, frustrated, when something's really pissed me off. Bow, bow, bow. I get a lot more out than when I'm feeling happy, dandy, and content with life. When you're content and happy, you know, you're just like, eh, whatever, you're chill. You're too, you're too busy enjoying everything. I was gonna make sure this is still recording, because this camera, this camera can be a bit odd. Okay, it's still recording. You know, when you're happy, you're just like, too chillax being happy. So, when you're down, I think, you, you know, to some level you are disturbed somewhere inside. And when you're disturbed, there's friction. There is something in reality that's not aligning with your desires inside. So there's friction. From that friction, there, is, there can be sparks. And you can use those sparks to propel you, to move you, to act, to face whatever it is that's bothering you and deal with that or to use that energy for something else. So get creative, as well as communication is important. And like I said, perspective is a big part of it. Mindset, your setting, 
I mean, these two things together, that's everything. And it determines how you feel, it determines how you think, your setting, and your mindset. And the two affect each other. So if you're hanging out with shady people in a dark, dark place, and they're all depressed or angry all the time, hostile, it's probably going to be hard to relax and feel happy and feel like you're on top of life. You know? Whereas if you're in a, in a positive environment around people who love you and support you and encourage you know, you and your endeavors and, and validate the positive attributes that make you who you are, chances are you're going to find it a lot easier to be uplifted in that place and happier, more relaxed, which is where you really need to be. You can't move through your emotions of sadness and blues, you know, if you're just stuck in a place that's blue, in a blue room, so to speak. You need to go somewhere that's more pink, more colorful, and then gradually your color will change. Because you change your setting. And that will change your mindset, which is blue. You know? But that's the thing. If you've got a, a blue mindset, maybe you're inclined to hang around other people who are feeling blue. You know, they say depressed people love company. You know what I'm saying? Because depressed people are lonely. And so they get other people around. Or they go to other people and they unload all their shit. And the other person might be depressed already. Or they become depressed because of this. But the other person unloads their shit. And they have like this big... Sh unloading shit fest, you know, depressed fest. All these depressive people coming together just so they can hug it out together and and exist in a collective and shared kind of sorrow, which is kind of cathartic. And it's good to relate to other people. You know, they have AA groups and these groups of people that have same problems, so they can relate to each other. But if you're always in that space, you're not actually around positive people, healthy people, people that are there, where you want to go to, where you want to be, and it's going to be hard to get there, it's hard, it's hard to really see the example and to be pulled to go there, you know, you just, you just, you're really going to settle for the level of the people that you're hanging around with, so when you've got a blue mindset, I think it's, it's good to be aware of the decisions you're making and why you're making it, and to question, as much as your heart's in it, use your head and be rational about it and think, how is this going to help me? You know, is this going to make things worse or is it going to make things better? And act accordingly. So, you know, just because you're blue doesn't mean you need to make blue choices and always keep choosing blue settings, which is just going to reinforce your blue state. What you can do is use your awareness, figure out an alternative, and commit to pulling yourself out from that blue or to ch phasing into a different color and a different state of feeling, different way of being. You know, go somewhere else. Force yourself to be in good company. Force yourself to do things that you usually would enjoy doing when you're not as blue. You know, and then you'll find that after, even though you might, might be faking it to begin with and kind of forcing it, that it actually becomes easier after a while. And naturally you'll start feeling enthusiastic and engaged and involved in whatever it is you're doing or whoever you're with. So that's a big part of it. There's mindset and changing your mindset. And the other part is, you know, if you're feeling depressed, a lot of people think that if they're depressed and they're sad and they're, they're, they lack motivation, you know, and maybe they have suicidal thoughts, you know, they just wish it was, they wish they weren't here. That's okay. You know, everyone goes to that place and everyone stays there intermittently for varying lengths. You know, nobody's happy all the time. No one's on top of their game all the time. It doesn't matter how much money someone has or how many things or how often they go on holidays, how accomplished someone is. You know, even Robin Williams, for example, recent example, as tragic as it is, someone you think that would have every reason to smile. He made us smile so much, and even he succumbed to it. So I think there's many. Top of the morning, ladies. Awesome. How you doing? <laughs> YouTube videos. Oh, true. Doing my thing. How are you? <laughs> oh, I've got a YouTube channel where I just talk about random crap and then post it online. Can I put the face in? Yeah, if you want, I can say hello. <laughs> Hello, hey. fellow stranger. How are you feeling? Well, I've been a bit crooked this morning, but I've feeling oh, good. Oh, good. I'm actually talking about depression. Just for an idea, I'm talking about ways to cure your blues. Things you should do when you're feeling blue. What do you do when you're feeling sad? What makes you perk up? Uh, going to a sports game. Going to a sports yeah. game? You enjoy your sports? Yeah, love it. Yeah, even if you're not feeling like you got the energy, do you just push yourself? And... Like last night, we went to the New Zealand Breakers against yeah. the Wild Wildcats. Oh, that would have been awesome. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. What do you do? 
What do you guys do? You guys actually play the sport. Getting getting physical. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. That's a good way to do it too, actually. Yeah, endorphins. Endorphins helps. Cool. All right. I actually hadn't touched on that, so cheers for bringing it up. Have a good day, ladies. Thank you. All right. I'm going to make sure. Yeah? The best of all. Best of all. It's going to a live Wellington Phoenix game. A live Wellington Phoenix. Yeah. My name's Phoenix, so that's very cool. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're awesome. Hi, <laughs> hi, <oi>, likewise. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, that was, that was lovely. There you go. So there's some more suggestions for you people when you're feeling down. And you know, it's kind of obvious, and I was probably gonna... Sorry, I'm just, I'm rearranging my camera, it's all... It's all gone to shit. Okay. Wait a second, wait a second, sorry God. So yeah, um, we'll touch on the exercise thing in a bit, but I was talking about Robin Williams. Even if people look like they got all their shit together, and they got every reason to smile and be happy, doesn't mean they're happy. Doesn't mean they got it together. You know, that's all just superficial stuff. Really what's going on the inside, it's hard for people to understand or even detect it. And that can make someone feel blue. If someone feels all alone and trapped and separate, isolated, and they feel like no one understands their pain, a lot of the time it's because they're not expressing it enough or they're not articulating it and communicating to those that they, sh they need to reach out to. And people try subtly to do cries for help and various, you know, things without actually explicitly and directly saying, okay, I've got a problem, or I'm upset about this. And people don't catch on, and then that makes them more depressed. They think, oh, nobody cares, or nobody's looking deeply enough or appreciating what I'm going through enough to, you know, to click onto what's happening and click onto how I'm feeling. You know, no one's really giving a damn. And that's not always the case. So I think that's the other thing is, is being open and, communi like I said, communicating again. But even for help, even if it's not problem resolution, but just just to unload your pain. And you don't want to be the person that, you know, misery loves company and unloading all your depression onto everyone else. But you will have friends there, you know, as long as you don't make a habit of it, you will have friends that will be happy to help you and will want to help you if only they knew what you were going through, you know? And at the end of the day, you don't want to take the same path that Robert Williams took. You know, I'm sure the man had his reasons, and it's, it's a great shame to, to everybody who was touched by the man, and will forevermore be touched throughout his films and whatnot. Um, I think there are many more avenues to take before you take that road. And one of those avenues, I most of the time w would say, is not antidepressants. Alright, so a lot of people think that, you know, if you're feeling depressed, feeling blue, take some drugs. Take some antidepressants, and you'll be sorted. You know, really, if if you look at depression as being a feeling, then antidepression is really anti-feeling drugs. And what it does is it takes you out of this state of feeling, and it doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you happy and more appreciative of life. You know what it does? It takes you from this state of feeling and puts you into this state of feeling. All right, and that's all it does. It changes your state of being and feeling and it doesn't even change it for the better instead of being overly emotional overly sad you become desensitized and numb i've heard from a lot of people and read about people becoming numb and generally not being able to feel deep happiness and rich happiness or sadness they just feel like neutral or indifferent and apathetic you know and then it, even if it does make you feel better if you know, fair enough, if you've got severe depression, then it might help you. It's better taking anti-depression pills or what have you than committing suicide, all right? That is the last resort. Second last resort, besides mutilating yourself, are antidepressants, in my opinion. For, you know, they do a lot worse for you in the long run. I think they make you more depressed once you stop taking them. And I've heard for some, they're addictive. You know, and once, once you stop taking them, bam, your depression comes back sixfold. You know what I'm saying? So it's really just patchwork, but while the patch is over the scar, it just starts festering underneath. And as long as you've got it covered, it's fine. But when you take that baby off, it's not good. 
So, really, I think feelings are there to be felt through. They're not there to be patched up or blocked away with an antidepressant or anti-feeling drug. I think, you know, a counsellor, psychologist, a professional who has been taught how to deal with people in your situation is a better way to go. And I know shrinks get a bad rap. Counselors get a bad rap. You've got to understand that, you know, not every single person... You know, everyone's had bad experiences with shrinks, and they think, well, they don't really care. All right, it's just by the book. And sure, not every one of them do care, and no doubt they all go through a lot of crap with patients, and after a while they become desensitized themselves. But not every single one of them is like that. Not every single one of them is apathetic or just, oh, mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah, how does that make you feel? Some of them are actually really engaging, sensitive to your feelings, and they actually appreciate what you're going through and can offer you advice from the heart and well thought out advice all right and look out for your best interests my father's a psychologist and he's helped me and he's helped a lot of people just being my dad and talking with him has helped me a, a fuck ton so that's always an option besides antidepressants you know feelings a lot of the time the way we feel about things is interwoven with how we think about things and how we interpret things so if you interpret something in a negative light, it'll make you sad. If you interpret it in a positive light, it'll make you feel more accepting, maybe even happier about it. And psychologists can help us do this. They can help us see the ways in which we are flawed in our thinking and how we might be being delusional or inaccurate or over-exaggerating some things, you know, or seeing things that aren't even there and helping us to be more realistic uh, about our opportunities, about our options that we have to resolving the problem all right so if it's not a friend if talking with a friend or family member doesn't help seek professional advice even if it's calling a helpline it's better than nothing and your know, knowledge is wis knowledge is power i don't agree but it's a good start applied knowledge is power so if you get the knowledge from a professional of how to overcome your situation whether it be you know, changing your routine or filling out an exercise to have you question things to your own conclusion, whatever it be, if you apply that knowledge, then you can actually see results and see the power of it. Um, so there, so we have communication, whether it be with friends for guidance or family, or whether it be with a person you're having a problem with, whether it be with a counselor for professional advice. All right, we have do doing things that you enjoy doing, that you're passionate about and being productive. Just creating things makes us happy. It's like, I made this, you know? Um, and we had, besides no antidepressants, please no antidepressants, we had the exercise suggestion from those, those fellow uh, citizens that walked past, from peer peers of the community, and us citizens. God, I can't believe I used that term, citizens. Jesus Christ, the conditioning, man cannot escape it but yeah exercise is actually an amazing way it helped me quit smoking it helped me lift myself out of depression for the most part i mean some say depression is the thing that never leaves and sure thing i dip it from time to time back to depressive ways of thinking but i'm getting a lot better at controlling it uh the duration of these depressive periods are shortened dramatically and they're nowhere near as heavy or deep it's much more superficial now, and I can see when I'm thinking negatively, and just, you know, and I just force myself to do things I enjoy doing, whether it be going to a sports game for that woman, for me, it will be writing, or watching a funny movie, or producing a music video, or talking about something, you know, or being good company, you know, around positive people, who play music, that really helps me, good music, and oh, the healing properties of music, I don't even need to touch on that one. Just play your favorite music that makes you happy while you're exercising. And while you're exercising and playing your music, I don't know, you can either listen to music or you can watch your favorite film. Maybe chuck on a comedy and do some exercise and bam, double whammy, putting yourself in a good mindset and physically putting yourself in a good place. The endorphins that you get from exercise. You just feel clearer and every cell in your body feels awake and alive. And you really do feel more of a zest for life so if you're down that's an alternative and it might be hard to push yourself to full and get into exercise so just start small go for a walk maybe halfway through your walk go for a jog 
and maybe give yourself incentive. Okay, I'm going to jog to some fast food place or some place I love to eat, my favorite place. I'm going to jog there if it's nearby and my reward can be that I get this really big meal that I usually wouldn't allow myself. You know what I mean? Just, you're not doing this to lose weight. You're doing this just for the exercise and to get your body going and start cleaning things out. Really, so exercise helps. Um, yeah, things to do when you're blue. There's some suggestions. I'm sure there are a lot of things. You know, meditation, I've heard, is actually the best way to alleviate depression and to keep in control of your feelings and your thoughts and everything to keep on top. And, you know, you won't always be in control of everything. You can't even be in control of everything any of the time. But you can appreciate what you are in control of and what you're not in control of, you can let be. Not everything has to affect you. Not everything you have to take on board is, you know, oh, you know, and like I said before, even if you're depressed, it's not the end of the world. Even if you're not productive, who cares? So what? You've got a long life ahead of you. And who said that life was about being happy all the time and being productive all the time? Maybe life is about experience. And it's about experiencing emotions on the whole scale from both ends of the spectrum inward and maybe it's about learning to overcome all these things and as well as how to appreciate you know all it's good to be happy and comfortable and have a luxury and that makes you smile a lot easier it makes your heart a lot lighter it's definitely great to have those things but growth we cannot understate the power and the value of growth and nothing pushes you to grow more than being disturbed than being depressed than being frustrated at circumstances or a situation or yourself you know these are the things that push you to your limits to become more than what you were a moment ago you know like they say growth doesn't start until you step outside your comfort barrier so if you're down and not productive you can still be productive you know I always say you know there's if What's my, what's my saying? If you can love, if you can learn to love learning, right? Then even if you lose something, whether it be losing time or losing happiness, losing a partner, losing a possession, losing your car, whatever. Even if you lose something, there's always something to learn. And so there's always something to love, nonetheless. It really is all perspective. Howdy. Anyway, I hope you found some of this interesting guys and keep in mind that you have many options at your disposal um you know the noose really is the last resort and i wouldn't even i wouldn't even write it on the wall as a resort at all because life is short enough as it is and i feel so sorry for those people that have ended it you know when you just think well what what would have life had in store for them in the future you know we get so consumed sometimes in our emotions and our state of being when really tragic or hard pressing things happen heartbreaking things you know and we we do things that we regret and sometimes we we end it we choose to end it in that irrational overcharged emotional state I've been there I've tried I didn't just get this for no reason alright and to be honest yeah, as much as I thought I wanted out at that point, I'm so happy that I stayed in. And life has been so rewarding since. And sure, it's, it hasn't been without tears and more heartbreak and more assholes, more betrayal, you know, and all that shit. But there has also been many laughs, many smiles, a whole lot of excitement, so many new things to experience. You know, you never know what the future holds, as grim and as dark as your present seems. It's not even about light being at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's just life is full of everything. And darkness is temporary. Light is eternal. If you hang around long enough, you'll see it from time to time. You know, if your eyes are open to it. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something from this. And whenever you're feeling blue, now you have a little bit more of an idea of what to do. Cool. Cheers.